Hello everyone, welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. For this video, I'm going to discuss on PCB layout. How can we actually partition the PCB? For example, we actually can partition the PCB according to the functional subsystem, which is our concentrate for today's video. We can also partition the PCB according to quiet area, which means that we want all the sensitive device actually all residue into this quiet area. We can also group all the noise maker under the emitter. So this will be the next few, few series discussion on PCB partition. This will be the part 39 series discussion on EMC consideration. The earlier on series discussion on EMC consideration I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a look on those videos if you're keen to know more about EMC consideration. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me some comment. For example, what are the topics that you guys are keen? Okay, for example, I know that you guys have request for EMC standard discussion. Okay, I will quickly do this once I finish all this discussion. Also, please let me know how can I actually improve the quality of this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, so let's start by understanding okay, why we need to do partition in a PCB. Okay, the PCB is also known as printed circuit board. Okay, the layout, in fact, is one of the most critical in controlling EMI emission of a product. Many times I have seen this okay, because they fear the test, the EMC test, they need to do a relay out of the PCB. Okay, so this is very time consuming and also it's quite costly if we need to implement this step. So therefore, this few video discussion on PCB partition, okay, I'm going to share how can we actually partition the PCB so that we can have a higher chance to pass all the EMC tests. A PCB is made up of different type of circuitry. Okay, so we have analog, we have digital, and we also have power. Basically, all of them combine in a very relative small area. Okay, so this diagram here, you can see that this is a PCB board. Okay, so on the PCB board, we can have analog circuitry, we can have digital circuitry, and we need to have power to turn on all this IC. And basically, they are all squeezed into a very small area. Okay, so this potentially has some issue on cross-coupling. Even circuit boards that are primary digital in operation, they still have some power line as well as interface that require them to convert from analog to digital signal and vice versa. There are three aspects to consider during PCB partition. Number one, okay, we can partition according to the function subsystem. Number two, quiet area. And number three, emitter. Okay, so number two and number three, quiet area and emitter, I will discuss on the next few series discussion. One of the partition of PCB layout is according to the individual function of each system, okay, which means that we can partition according to their function they play, along with their respective support circuitry. Okay, so along means that, for example, certain device, you still need to have the power okay, to support the circuitry or some of the connection that will be connected to this function. Okay, so all of them will be put closely together. So when we actually locate all the components close to each other, okay, we actually can minimize the trace length. Okay, because they are nearby, so we don't need to run the trace all over the place. So the trace length, technically, it should be the shortest possible way. And because of this, okay, we can also optimize the function performance. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, for example, a typical motherboard okay, that can be divided into the following area. We have the processor. Typically, we would like to put the processor right at the middle. Okay, we have this clock logic, okay, clock, which is very sensitive. So we will need to ensure that there will be no cross-coupling onto the clock signal. We also have the memory. 
memory, typically we will put them together with the processor. We have the bus control, bus interface, PCT, bus, peripherals, device interface. Okay, we also have video, audio processing modules and etc. Okay, so over here you can see that a simple motherboard, you can actually divide them into many different functions. Okay, so this diagram here basically show a receiver partition according to the function block and also maybe on the frequency. Okay, over here, these are where all the RF front end. Okay, so typically over here, they actually has a higher frequency. We also have the baseband. Okay, typically they have a lower frequency. So after the IF, they actually pass to the demodulator and baseband processing. So basically, it will be a good idea to put these two close to each other. We also have the local oscillator. Okay, basically they work together with RF and IF. Basically is to down convert from the high frequency to a low frequency. Power supply cannot be neglect because all these devices here require power. Okay, so power supply should be strategic put in a way that they have the shortest routing to reach all the different modules here. And last but not least, we have all those microcontrollers that actually store all our programming over here. So basically, in short, this is a very simple idea. How can we actually partition the receiver that is according to the function block and also frequency? All components on a PCB need to be placed closely together in order to shorten the routing length. Okay, so this is what we have discussed on the previous slide. We would like to put as close as possible. And once we put it as close as possible, another issue surface up. For example, however, when we actually have an increase in the frequency of the signal, significantly can make data transmission vulnerable to a higher amount of cell radiation and thereby more crosstalk, especially true when we place them close together in order to shorten the routing length. Okay, so this sentence means that, okay, for example, earlier on I have mentioned that we want to reduce the routing length as much as possible. So we actually place them very closely together. However, another issue surface out. When we actually put them close to each other, okay, we cannot deny that we actually will have more crosstalk effect. Okay, because since they are so near to each other, coupling can easily occur. And moreover, okay, this is especially true when the frequency actually increase. In short, the higher the frequency, the more possible that crosstalk actually occur. And this may result a EMC issue. Hence, it is necessary to prevent interference between device with different operating frequency band. So, which means that okay, we must find a way to partition according to the frequency so as to minimize any interference. Okay, especially interference from high bandwidth device to other device. As I mentioned earlier on, once we have high bandwidth or high frequency, okay, they can be very vulnerable for crosstalk. So therefore, we need to ensure that any high frequency or high bandwidth device, we want to keep them away from those devices that is very, very sensitive. Hence, if possible, keep function bandwidth area together. Okay, for example, we can have high, medium and low frequency. So we would like to keep all those under high frequency, which is RF, for example. And we also can have keep all those medium, for example, uh, LO and low, which is the IF or baseband processing. So basically, we can separate all of them based on the different function. Okay, do not mix different bandwidth area anywhere on the PCB or associate high bandwidth area with low bandwidth circuit, okay, which means that we don't want high bandwidth and low bandwidth. They are just all over the place. Okay, we want to have a confined area where we put all the high bandwidth and also a area where we put all the low bandwidth. Okay, with this, this will reduce crosstalk reflection and electromagnetic radiation and ensure the signal integrity. Okay, which means that if we take care of all this design, the okay, crosstalk will not, I wouldn't say that will not occur. Maybe we can minimize the amount of crosstalk. And basically with the minimize of amount of crosstalk, we can actually keep the integrity of the signal. Okay, which means that the signal for some of the message will not be distorted. Okay, so this is page here, so some example of PCB layout. In short, mainly you can see over here, 
Okay, we just want to partition according to their frequency. Okay, low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency. So we partition them closely. And basically, you can see that these are all those interface that require to have connection to the connector. Okay, so this is one of the way we can actually perform our PCB layout. Also over here, you can see that, okay, for example, if we have all those I.O. circuit, okay, input and output circuit, okay, we would like to place them close to the connector because this is where the input and output connector here. So we want to put it here so that we can actually minimize the trace length. Okay, for example, over here, this is all the internal interface. Okay, basically, this is where we connect to the motherboard. So we would like to put all those components that is close to the motherboard connector. So over here, you can see that what we actually do is basically we just want to put whatever that will be input and output connecting to external device. We want to put it to the edge connector because this is where we actually link to external device. For example, if these are all so-called internal interface, basically we want to put near to the motherboard connector. So this is also another example of PCB layout. Another one basically is to separate the analog to digital. Okay, over here you can see that these are all the analog and these are all the digital circuit here. And all the analog I.O. and digital I.O. they are actually put close to the connector. Again, like what I mentioned earlier on, this will reduce the trace length. So all the analog circuit are here. For, for example, I need to connect them to an input or output circuit. Basically, I will put all those input circuit that will be close to the connector. Okay, over here, you can also see that I actually segregate them into high frequency, medium frequency, and low frequency. For example, let's say this is a RF, okay, which is mainly the high frequency need to be sent up to the connector. So I would like to put the high frequency close to the connector. For this case here, because the high frequency do not require to access to the connector, so therefore I want to put them as far as possible away from the connector. So for example, on the other side of the PCB. So again, from here, you can see that I actually separate them by high frequency, medium frequency, and low frequency. And these are all the different interface circuit that will be required to connect to the connector. Okay, so next, the purpose of designing functional partition on a PCB is to keep this different area isolated from each other. Okay, so the key idea why we need to do partition is because we want to isolate, for example, based on the frequency. For example, if we know that these are all the emitter, we also do not want them to be close to the any sensitive device. So how can we actually do this? First, okay, we need to take care of crosstalk. EMI, signal integrity, and also the power supply. In terms of crosstalk, okay, we need to be very so-called ensure that the culprit signal, okay, which means that the emitter, a lot of noise emitter, okay, they may actually couple to other signal, for example, the victim, and we need to try to isolate them as far as possible. So this is the first way how can we minimize the crosstalk. Okay, we know the culprit, we know the victim, so therefore we want to put them as far as possible so as to minimize crosstalk. Next, on the EMI, okay, to prevent electromagnetic interference, you need to prevent return signal of this different area from mixing together. Okay, for example, we have analog signal, we have digital signal. Okay, we do not want to mix the return signal together and therefore they must not also cross split the ground or power plane. Okay, so this part I will illustrate on another video. So how can we actually populate the digital and also the analog signal onto one PCB board? Okay, so I will discuss this later on. Next on the signal in D, sensitive device such as clock. Okay, as I told you that clock basically is very sensitive because these are all the pulse synchronization. Any distortion, the whole PCB cannot work. So therefore, the clock can be very sensitive and we need to keep them close to their associate circuitry as much as possible. Please do not run all the clock signal all over the board. Okay, if not, you are going to have lots of clock stock and basically you will realize that there will be lots of issues. Last but not least on power supply. Okay, so this part should be close to those components that they actually power. 
and basically they run on the same layer. Okay, for example, if you have a multiple layer of PCB, okay, you, if you can afford, okay, you can actually have one layer purely for power and another another layer purely for the ground. Okay, so with this, you actually can minimize the trace length. You provide the power and basically the ground will be a returning current. Basically with this, you can ensure that the trace length can be reduced. Okay, like what I mentioned, if you can afford to have a multiple layer PCB. So this will be the ideal solution, how to minimize any so-called EMI emission out. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion on EMC consideration. I hope you can find all this video interesting and helpful. With this, thank you so much and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.